What's going on, everybody? It's your favorite unconventional teacher, Kilo Loco, and today we're going to be going over Swift UI grids. And more specifically, we're going to be going over how to get up and running with Lazy H grid and Lazy V grid. So let's go ahead, jump right in. All right, so in order to get started with grid view, what you're going to actually need to do is make sure that you have. Xcode version 12. Right now I'm using the beta since it just came out. And as long as you have that, you should be able to use grid view. Let's go ahead and create a new app and go ahead and call it whatever you want. All right. So as you can see, I have Swift UI selected for the interface. Um, you can go ahead and choose either lifecycle. It doesn't really matter which one you choose for this tutorial. And then you just go ahead and hit next. All right. Once your environment's all loaded up, let's go ahead and throw in some data in here. I'm going to use some very elegant and sexy emojis. All right, so when you're working with a grid, you have this concept of columns and you have rows. So columns go up and down, rows go left and right. Now, if we want to create several columns, what we're going to do is we're going to need to specify those columns. So let's go ahead and add in some columns right now. All right, so as you can see, I have this array called columns, right? And I'm specifying how many columns I want in here. Now, right now, it looks like I'm speci specifying one column, right? But what you need to pay attention to is that this is an adaptive uh, layout. And what that means is that it's going to take in the minimum amount to create this item. So whatever size that we specify for this item is going to be the size of that item. And since we are going to be doing this in a vertical grid, we're going to be scrolling up and down. This is essentially saying that we want this to go left to right. So our column is going to be going left to right with each item in it being a minimum of 100. And if that doesn't make too much sense right now, it'll make more sense when we actually have something over here on the screen. So what we want to do is we actually want to add in our scroll view and our lazy V grid, which is going to allow us to put in these emojis. So let's go ahead and add that now. All right, so now we have our scroll view and our lazy grid. And as you can see here, it takes in our columns, which is essentially this array of grid items. Now what we want to do is we want to do a for each on each of our emojis. And we want to make sure that we're rendering out each emoji in a text view. So let's go ahead and add that now. All right. So as you can see, we have a for each, which is looping through each of our emojis. We're setting the ID to self since um, each of these are strings. So each as long as each string is different, we can use the ID as self on a string. And then we're passing each emoji in each emoji. Since it's a tech or a string, we could pass it directly into text and it should render out. Let's go ahead and resume our canvas. That's what I like to see. So they're a little bit small. So let's make them a little bit bigger, a little bit sexier. Hell yeah. So now, as you can see, we have our beautiful emojis looking very sexy and you can see that there's three columns, right? Even though that we specified one column right here, there's three columns. And the reason for that is because each of these, as long as it's um, taking up a hundred minimum, we're going to be able to fit each of those in there. Now, if I were to do something lower, like 80, we should be able to fit in four of them because uh, that means that each item is going to be 80 and we should have enough space to show each of these in uh, its own column for four. So as you can see, we can just simply set the minimum size of this adaptive layout for a grid item in order to create a column. Now, this is great. Um, as long as you're happy with working with these types of values directly in here, you can use one grid item and it will create your columns and it will be dynamic. However, if you wanted to go a different route and you want it, um, it to be a certain amount every single time and you didn't know exactly how big the screen was, then you could use something that's called flexible. Now flexible can take in the same arguments as well, minimum or maximum, but it also doesn't necessarily need an argument at all. And it will just simply fill up each row as much as possible. Now, if I were to go ahead and resume my canvas now, what we would actually see is that it's going to be one single column because what we're saying is we want this grid item to be flexible and take up the entire width 
of the column. Now, it doesn't necessarily know that it's a column. Since we're just adding it in a lazy V grid, it's a, it's going to take up the opposite um, direction. So if this was a H grid, a horizontal grid going left to right, it would take up the space top to bottom. But since we're going up and down, it's going to take up the space from left to right. So that's what it means to be flexible. Now, how do we get our columns back with a flexible? So what we would do is we would simply add more grid items. So now, as you can see, I have three grid items, each of them being flexible, meaning that they're going to take up as much space as possible. But since we have three of them, they're going to essentially be taking up as much space evenly between each other. So if we go ahead and run resume again, we should see that we get our three columns coming back. So pretty simple, pretty sexy. I love it. Now, one more thing that I want to add in here uh, before we move on is just I want a little bit of spacing. This is this is crowding me. You're making me feel kind of claustrophobic. So let's go ahead and add some spacing to our lazy V grid. We add a little bit of spacing. We hit resume. We take a look at it. And guess what? Now we can actually breathe in here. I, I no longer am feeling anxiety. So that's pretty amazing. Let's go ahead and run it just to make sure that everything's working as we expect it to and making sure that we can scroll as we would expect it to. Looking sexy. I like it. All right, let's move on. Let's go ahead and add a H grid, a lazy H grid. Now, what we want to do is we want to add essentially all the same stuff, but we need to do it below. So if we wanted to add it below where we would have our H grid down here, we would have our vertical grid up here. Then what we need to do is we need to go back to the good old fashioned V stack. So let's wrap this scroll view in a V stack. All right, wrapped it in a V stack. We run it one more time to make sure that nothing broke. We don't like broken things and it's looking pretty good, pretty sexy so far. Let's keep going. Fabulous, baby. Yeah. So as you can see, pretty much all the same code, right? So let's look at the differences. We have our scroll view up here and that's going to hold our lazy V grid and that's all up here, right? So pretty much the same as down here, we have a scroll view. All we're doing is we're specifying what the axis is and the axis is essentially saying we want to go left to right. So we're saying horizontal, right? Then we want to just make sure that we're using a lazy H grid, horizontal, once, once again, the opposite of a V grid. And instead of columns, we're going to be using rows. Now I'm showing you that we can pass in columns right here and we could just use the same, uh, the same three pattern, right? And that'll work perfectly fine. And we could even just specify different spacing if we want it. And then everything inside of the lazy H grid is exactly the same. So we have the same, um, the same data just being presented in a different way. Now, if I want it to have a different grid layout for our our H grid, then what I could do is I could create another array called rows. So let's do that now. All right. So as you can see, all I did was I created another array of grid items and this time I just wanted to have four instead, whatever, put in whatever you think is going to fit nice and snug and it's going to, it's going to, it's going to look sexy. And down here, I just made sure instead of rows being um, my columns, I set it equal to rows. And now we have four rows and the spacing we're just setting to 50. Everything else stays the same. So that's pretty much all you need to know in order to get up and running with a uh, lazy V grid, lazy H grid. And also the great thing about this is that since they are lazy, what they're going to be doing is if you're working with something that's data uh, or resource intensive, such as images, then what's going to happen is all your data is going to be lazily loaded into memory so that you're not taking up a whole bunch of memory. As soon as your app launches, it only uses the memory that it needs to. So that's also another really great thing about the lazy keyword in front of this H grid and the V grid. And that's pretty much it. All right. So that's pretty much it. Lazy V grid, lazy H grid, throw it in a scroll view and voila. Very easy collection views, just like in UI kit, just like grandma used to make. All right. So I hope that you learned something new in this video. If you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If there are any other APIs that have been released during WWDC and you want me to cover them, let me know. 
I would love to cover those for you. And make sure that if you're not subscribed, you go ahead and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. All right, so that's going to be it for me. You guys have a great rest of the day and go out there and keep coding passionately.